Hi, in this lecture we are going to learn about heights and distances, some important terms first. Horizontal plane, a plane parallel to the earth's surface or the ground is called a horizontal plane. Horizontal line, a line drawn parallel to the horizontal plane or the ground is called a horizontal line. Line of sight, line joining the observer's eye and the object is called the line of sight. Angle of elevation, the angle which the line of sight makes with the horizontal line passing through the observer's eye when the object is above the observer is called the angle of elevation. Let me show it to you. So let's say an object is somewhere here up in the sky. So it could be the top of a tower or the top of a building or an aeroplane and the observer is somewhere on the ground here. Now make a horizontal line passing through the observer. So this will be the horizontal line. Make the line of sight which will be the line joining the observer and the object. So this is the line of sight. So what will be the angle of elevation? This angle will be the angle of elevation because the angle between the line of sight and the horizontal line passing through the observer. Coming to angle of depression, the angle which the line of sight makes with the horizontal line passing through the observer's eye when the object is below the observer. That is called the angle of depression. So let's say now the observer is somewhere up in the sky at the top of a building or somewhere and the object is on the ground could be a ship in the sea or a car on the road. So make a horizontal line passing through the observer. So this will be the horizontal line. Make the line of sight which will be the line joining the object and the observer. So this will be the line of sight. So what will be the angle of depression? It will be the angle between the horizontal line and the line of sight. So this will be the angle of depression. Now why do we say that angle of elevation is equal to angle of depression? Let me show it to you. Now let's take this example. You understood this example, right? So you know that this is the angle of elevation. Now let's interchange the positions of the object and the observer. So let's place the observer here and the object here. Now we are going to find out the angle of depression of the object. To find that we have to draw a horizontal line passing through the observer. So this will be the new horizontal line. The line of sight will be this line again because it is the line joining the object and the observer. The angle of depression of the object will be this angle. Now why do we say that D is equal to E? See, this is a horizontal line and this is a horizontal line. So they will be parallel. So if we consider this line of sight as the transversal, angle D will be equal to E. Why? Because they will be alternate angles. because they will be alternate angles. That's why they are equal. So we are going to use these concepts and solve questions now. Let's quickly, let's quickly revise sine, cos and tan in a right angle triangle. So ABC is a right angle triangle. So let's take this angle theta. Now with respect to this angle theta, which side is the perpendicular? The side opposite to it. This is the perpendicular. Which is the base? This is the base. Which is the hypotenuse? This is the hypotenuse. Now let's calculate sine theta. Sine theta will be what? Perpendicular by hypotenuse. What is the perpendicular with respect to theta? It's AB. What is the hypotenuse? It's AC. So it's AB by AC. What about cos theta? Cos theta is base by hypotenuse, which will be base here in this case is BC when we are talking about theta. 
divided by hypotenuse is AC. What about tan theta? So, tan theta is perpendicular by base. So, what is the perpendicular? AB. What is the base? BC. So, it will be AB by BC. Now, let me tell you one more thing. Had we taken this angle, let us call it alpha. So, what would sin alpha be in that case? See, with respect to alpha, this becomes the perpendicular because that is the opposite side and this becomes the base. So, sin alpha would be, the hypotenuse would remain the same. So, sin alpha would be perpendicular by hypotenuse which will be BC by AC. Okay. Now, coming back to theta. So, sin theta you got right. So, you know what cosec theta is? It's the reciprocal of sin theta. So, it will be AC by AB. What is sec theta? Sec theta is the reciprocal of cos theta. So, it will be AC by BC. And what will be cot theta? Cot theta is the reciprocal of tan theta. So, it will be BC by AB. Right? Now, okay. So, so this table shows trigonometric ratio of standard angles and this table you will have to memorize. Basically, you will have to memorize values of sine, cos and tan of the standard angles. The remaining three ratios you can get by taking the reciprocal. So, make sure you learn these values by heart. This brings us to the questions, question 1. In the given figure, ABCD is a rectangle in which BD is to BC is 2 is to root 3. Find the value of angle theta in degrees. So, what is given? Let us write what is given first. BD is to BC equal to 2 is to root 3. Now, can I write it as BD by BC equal to 2 by root 3? Right? Okay. Now, let us leave it at that. Now, let us come back to the question. Now, BD is which side? This side. Okay. BC is which side? This side. Right? Now, since this ABCD is a rectangle, this will be 90 degrees. Now, BD and BC are part of which triangle? They are part of triangle B, D, C, right? So, we will first calculate either this angle or this angle in terms of theta and then take sine, cos or tan, whatever is suitable and substitute the values. So, this is going to be our you know, process. So, if this angle is theta, what will this angle be? Will this angle also be theta? Why? Because ABCD is a rectangle, so AB will be parallel to DC. With BD as the transversal, angle ABD will be equal to angle BDC equal to theta. Why? Alternate angles. Right? So, you got this angle as theta. Now, what is given is the ratio between BD and BC. With respect to theta, BD is the hypotenuse in triangle BDC and BC is the perpendicular. So, which trigonometric ratio should we use? Which trigonometric ratio gives the relation between perpendicular and hypotenuse? Sin theta, right? So, let us use sin theta. Let us write sin theta sin theta would be equal to, now this is the perpendicular, this is the hypotenuse, it will be BC by BD. Now, what is BC by BD? What is given? BD by BC is given. We want BC by BD. Do you notice that this BC by BD 
is the reciprocal of BD by BC, right? So let's take the reciprocal of this. So if we take the reciprocal here, we'll get BC by BD equal to root three by two, right? Let's call it one. Now sine theta equal to BC by BD, that'll be equal to root three by two. Why? From one or sin theta equal to root 3 by 2. Now root 3 by 2 is sine of which angle? 60 degrees. So this is equal to sin 60 degrees. So sin theta equal to sin 60. What does that mean? It means that theta will be equal to 60 degrees. So this will be our answer. Right? Okay, let's get to the next question now. Question 2. A vertical tower is 2 root 3 meters high and the length of its shadow is 2 meters. Find the angle of elevation of the source of light. Now, before I start solving this question, let me tell you something very important. Listen very carefully. In any question in heights and distances, it's very important to understand the question nicely and then draw the figure correctly. If the figure you draw is correct, half your problem is solved. So make sure you draw the figure correctly. So let's let's try to make this figure. Okay. Vertical tower is 2 root 3 meters high. So this is the vertical tower. which is 2 root 3 meters high. Let's say this is the ground. Okay. Now, let's say the source of light is somewhere here. Okay. Let's say the source of light is somewhere here. So, how will the shadow be formed? Okay. The light will be coming in this direction. Right. And the shadow form will be this. This thing will be the shadow form. Right. So, this will be the length of the shadow form this will be 90 degrees okay and this will be the angle of elevation of the source of light this is the tower you understood how i drew the figure let me explain to you so this is the source of light this is the tower right now the light will be coming in this direction right so the shadow will be formed on the ground until this position where the light rays reach the ground fine so this will be the length of shadow which is given to be two meters this the height is given to be two three meters this will be the angle of elevation so let me erase this dirty figure and let me bring a cleaner figure there it is so you have the source of light, you have the tower AB, this is the tower, right? This is 2 root 3 meters high, this will be the shadow, right? And theta will be the angle of elevation. So we need to find theta, right? Now, which trigonometric ratio should we use? Now see, with respect to theta, AB is given, right? So, with respect to theta, what is AB? AB is the perpendicular. And with respect to theta, what is BC? BC is the base. Which trigonometric ratio relates perpendicular and base? Tan theta. So, we are going to take tan theta in triangle ABC. Tan theta will be equal to perpendicular by base okay or tan theta equal to what is a b 2 root 3 and what is b c it's 2 that will be equal to root 3 and root 3 is the value of tan of what angle it is 60 degrees so tan theta equal to tan 60 that would mean theta equal to 60 degrees so this is our answer understood let's move on to the next question
question 3 a bridge on a river makes an angle of 45 degrees with its edge if the length along the bridge from one edge to the other is 150 meters find the width of the river so let us draw the figure first so let's say the river is something like this right these are the edges of the river right now the bridge on a river makes an angle of 45 degrees with its edge so make a line 45 making 45 degrees with the edge of the river so this will be the bridge fine if the length along the bridge from one edge to the other so this is one edge this is another edge fine so this length is given to be 150 meters right let's drop a perpendicular here so that we complete a right angle triangle and we can take sine cos so tan we need to find the width of the river so this will be the width of the river understood so now let me erase the dirty figure okay and bring the cleaner nice beautiful figure here okay so the same figure as before you have the river and then oh, let me change the color so you have the river here river here the bridge making an angle of 45 degrees here right so bc is what we need to find that's the width of the river right ab is given to be 150 meters right now take triangle abc in triangle abc ab is given to be 150 meters we need to find bc right now with respect to this angle which is given uh, 45 degrees what is ab ab is the hypotenuse and what is bc bc is the perpendicular right which trigonometric ratio relates perpendicular and hypotenuse obviously it's sine theta so sine of 45 degrees equal to perpendicular bc by hypotenuse ab or what is sine of 45 degrees it's 1 by root 2 45 degrees is a standard angle and you should remember the value of sine 45 cos 45 tan 45 now bc is what we need to find ab is what we know as 150 right so bc will be equal to take this 150 to the other side be 150 divided by root 2 meters now we are going to rationalize because there's a root term in the denominator so 150 into 150 by root 2 into root 2 by root 2 meters so it will be 150 root 2 root 2 into root 2 is 2 so 2 is 75 times this gives us 75 root 2 meters now what is the value of root 2 then the two values you need to remember root 2 ka value is 1.414 root 3 ka value is 1.732 you need to remember these two values so if you want to calculate in decimals it will be 75 into 1.414 meters if you calculate it comes around approximately 106.05 meters fine so let's move on to the next question Question 4. A tree breaks due to strong wind and the broken part bends so that the top of the tree, okay, it should be tree here. Just ignore. It should be, this thing should be tree, okay. So that the top of the tree touches the ground, making an angle of 30 degrees with the ground let's let's try to draw the figure so there's a tree okay 
there is a tree tree breaks due to strong wind broken part bends so let's say the tree breaks from let's say here not exactly the midpoint fine so let's say from somewhere here but it will not reach the ground so let's say here from here now what will happen this thing breaks and let's say it falls this side so it will fall here right let's say this is the ground the figure is not drawn to scale so don't mind okay so this is the ground that we have right this was the original tree whose height was this much right now due to strong wind the tree breaks from this point not necessarily the midpoint obviously this will be lower than the middle middle point of the tree so now this half i mean more than half whatever it is it falls on the ground touches the ground here right so this length will be equal to this length right this will be 90 degrees now so that the top of the tree touches the ground making an angle of 30 degrees so 30 degrees is this angle with the ground the distance between the foot of the tree this is the foot of the tree and the point where the top touches the ground is this point this is 8 meters so this distance is 8 meters what was the height of the tree so the total height is what you need to find so we'll assume that let's say the part fall in I mean the length this length basically is x so this will also be x now let's say let's see how we get to the total height so let's get a cleaner figure first okay okay now see a b is the tree so this is the entire tree a p is the portion that fell and touched the ground at c so this is the top of the tree that touches the ground which is at a distance of 8 meters from the foot of the tree right and we assume this to be x a p length to be x then p c will also be x this is 90 degree and this is 30 degree as so I draw in the figure what you can do is you can try it making you know you can try solving the question making that figure you know or making the tree fall onto the other side onto the right side right and see if you get the same answer you'll, you'll be getting the same answer so don't worry about it now in this triangle PCB in triangle PCB what is given uh, this angle is given right with respect to this angle PB is the perpendicular and BC is the base so can we find the purple okay and then this X is the hypotenuse right so what we are going to do is we need X we need to find X and we also need to find this length PB right because we what we ultimately want to find is the total height of the tree which will be a b and a b will be what it will be a p plus p b right so we need to find a p and we need to find p b and a p is equal to p c so we'll need to find p c and p b using whatever information is given so in triangle p c b let's find perpendicular first let's find p b first right we know the base which trigonometric ratio relates the perpendicular and base tan theta so we are going to take tan 30 degrees that will be equal to the perpendicular which is pb by the base which is pc now tan 30 is what 1 by root 3 that will be equal to pb by BC BC is 8 meter so just shift this 8 to the other side we'll get PB as 8 by root 3 meters fine now again in triangle PCB we need to find we just found out PB we need to find PC how will you find PC PC is the hypotenuse and 
BC is the base. So, which trigonometric ratio connects the base and the hypotenuse in a triangle? It is the cos. The cos 30 degrees is equal to base which is BC by hypotenuse which is BC. Base is 8 by PC. Let us let, let's keep it PC only. right? Cos 30 degrees would be root 3 by 2 that will be equal to 8 by PC. So, can you find PC? Just cross multiply, take PC to the other side. So, 8 into 2 by root 3 equal to 16 by root 3 meter. Now, what did we need to find? We wanted to find AB, right? So, AB is equal to AP plus PB or PC plus PB. PC is what? 16 by root 3 meters. PB is what? 8 by root 3 meters, right? Now, root 3 root 3, the denominators are the same. So, you can just add the numerators. 24 by root 3 meters. Rationalize it to root 3 by root 3. So this will give me 24 root 3 by 3 because root 3 into root 3 would be 3 and this will give me 3 1s are 3 8s are so 8 root 3 meters which is the answer understood great so let us move on to the next question Okay, let's remove the figure first. Example 5. A kite is flying at a height of 60 meters above the ground. The string attached to the kite is temporarily tied to a point on the ground. So, let's say the kite is somewhere here, right? This is the kite, okay? It's temporarily tied to a point somewhere here on the ground. So, this is the ground, okay? this is the ground and it is flying at a height of 60 meters so this drop a perpendicular on the ground so this height will be 60 meters right let's name a b c okay now the inclination of the string to the ground is 60 degrees very good so we know this angle is 60 degrees now we know one side so we can calculate the other sides using sine cos tan whatever find the length of the string assuming that there is no slack in the string now why this is important that there is no slack in the string had there been a slack in the string then the string would not have been straight would have been something like this and we would not be able to apply sine cos and tan such a figure because this is not a triangle right so Let's remove this okay so we need to find the length of the string which is a b right so this is the hypotenuse this is the perpendicular with respect to 60 degrees so perpendicular and hypotenuse you know what to use we'll use sine theta right and we'll get the answer so let's quickly show you the beautiful figure yes now so here is the kite right at a 60 degrees now we need to find a b right now a p is given a p is given to be 60 meters and angle b is given to be 60 degrees now a p as i said is the perpendicular with respect to 60 degrees and a b is the hypotenuse so which trigonometric ratio connects the perpendicular and hypotenuse in a triangle it's sine theta so let's take sine 60 degrees equal to perpendicular which is a p divided by a p that's the hypotenuse equal to what is a p 
AP is 60 and AB is what we need to calculate. What is sine 60? It's a root 3 by 2 equal to 60 by AB. This cross multiply, take AB to the other side in the numerator. AB will be equal to 60. Take the, this to the, to the other side, come in the numerator and then root 3 in the denominator. This gives me 120 by root 3 meters. Rationalize it root 3 by root 3 equal to 120 root 3 by root 3 into root 3 is 3. So this will give me 40 root 3 meters. Right now, root 3 in this question it's given that it is 1.732. Whenever such a thing is given in the question make sure you convert that root 3 or root 2 into decimals so here we it is mandatory to convert this into decimals so this you can multiply and get the uh, think 69.28 meters approximately approximately fine i hope you have understood this question as well If you have any questions, please uh, send me a message or get in touch and we'll clear out your doubt. Okay, so question 5, done. Next question, question 6. Okay, pay attention. A 1.5 meter tall boy is standing at some distance from a 30 meter tall building. Okay, so let's make this tiny guy 1.5 meter tall boy. Okay, let's make the ground. This horizontal line is the ground. Okay. And let's say the building is here. How tall is it? 30 meters. Okay, so this entire length will be 30 meters right this is the building this is the boy boy's eye will be somewhere here okay the angle of elevation from his eyes to the top of the building this is the top of the building let's call it a and let's call it b here so the angle of elevation from here to the top of the building at a increases from 30 degrees to 60 degrees as he walks towards the building so this guy is going to walk in this direction let's say after some time he reaches here right so this will be at the same height right let's continue it up to here so this will be 1.5 meters so what will this distance be this will be 28.5 meters why 30 meters is the total height let's say that let's call it c here let's call it d here so ad is 30 meters right and then we have uh, cd is 1.5 meters so what will ac be ad minus cd so 30 meters minus 1.5 meters equal to 28.5 meters right now join this first position of the observer of the boy to the top of the building we have the horizontal line already drawn passing through the observer's eye so this will be the angle of elevation that was 30 degrees now when he moves to the new position make the new line of sight the horizontal line is already given this angle is 60 degrees right so what we need to find is let's call this point e we need to find be because we need to find the distance that the boy has walked towards the building clear eh? figure is clear right so now let me show you the cleaner figure right okay there it is so this is the figure whatever i drew i mean it's just the same 
1.5 meters this will be 1.5 meters just the nomenclature is changed a b c d are changed but conceptually i mean everything else remains the same right so this is 30 degrees becomes 60 degrees we need to find the distance c e because the initial position was here the final position was here of the boy and we wanted to find the distance that he has walked towards the building it's c e that we need to find now what you observe here is that this side c e is a part of this triangle a c e which is not a right angle triangle right so what we need to do is we'll find right angle triangles in the question in the figure and then with the help of you know sine cos and tan we'll evaluate few other sides and then use addition subtraction to get to our answer and calculate the distance ce let's do that okay so let me choose another ring okay so now we need ce now if we get cf and we subtract ef from it so what i am aiming to do is calculate this distance cf because it's a part of a right angle triangle acf and you calculate ef which is this and if i subtract ef from cf i'll be getting cf right ce sorry right i'll be getting ce right so that is what i'm going to do now okay so what do you want to calculate first so let's take a triangle okay this is 90 degrees mind you this is 90 degrees right now in triangle a f e now a f is what a f we already calculated a f was a b that we know is 30 meters minus f b a b is 30 meters minus f b is 1.5 meters so this will give me 28.5 meters right this 30 is the entire length from here to here don't get confused it's not a f so in triangle a f e i know a f right and with respect to 60 degrees this is the perpendicular i want to calculate e f right why because ce will be given by cf minus ef right this is what we want to calculate eventually right so first we'll calculate ef then we'll calculate cf and then we'll subtract so ef is what we want to calculate and with respect to 60 degrees this ef is the base so which trigonometric ratio connects the base and the perpendicular in a triangle tan theta so we are going to take tan 60 so tan 60 degrees equal to af by ef right what is tan 60 it's root 3 equal to what is af 28.5 meters divided by ef is what we don't know just take ef to the other side and root 3 to the other side ef equal to 28.5 divided by root 3 let me rationalize it here root 3 by root 3 equal to 28.5 root 3 by 3 because root 3 into root 3 would be 3 but this cancel it 9.5 is what comes here so 9.5 root 3 meters is what ef is now oh, short of space so let me change the ink okay now in triangle let me do it here uh, in triangle acf again now with respect to 30 degrees af is the perpendicular again and cf this is cf right this is the base again we are going to use tan theta because tan theta connects the perpendicular and the base 
so this time theta is 30 degrees so tan 30 degrees equal to AF divided by CF AF is how much again 28.5 right and CF is how much CF is CF only right so 1 by root 3 that is tan 30 degrees should be equal to 28.5 by CF cross multiply CF will be 28.5 so you will take root 3 this side and CF this side so 28.5 root 3 meters now what do we need to find we wanted to find CE right so CE is what let's do it here okay CE is CF minus EF what is CF 28.5 28.5 root 3 minus 9.5 root 3 so that will be equal to 19 root 3 meters root 3 is not given so you can leave it as that I mean you can leave it at this 19 root 3 meters is the answer I hope this is clear right now after this lecture what you are going to do is you're going to solve all these questions again by yourself don't go through the lecture just note down the question and attempt it yourself because when when I'm solving question I'm already telling you how to solve questions now you want to check you, sh you should check basically whether you remember the concept and whether you are uh, able to logically apply the concepts right instead of just memorizing everything so six is done now let's come to the seventh question as observed from the top of a 75 meters high lighthouse the angles of depression of two ships are 30 degrees and 45 degrees if one ship is exactly behind the other on the same side of the lighthouse then find the distance between the two ships so let's draw the figure first this is the lighthouse which is 75 meters high let's call it a b right this is the c now it's mentioned that the ships are on the same side of the lighthouse otherwise they could have also been on the opposite sides right but it's mentioned clearly that they are on the same side of the lighthouse one behind the other now the angles of depression of the two ships so join this is the this is one ship the second ship okay make the horizontal line through a because the observer is above the object remember when you're talking about angle of depression the observer is above the objects so here is the observer at the top of the lighthouse so we drew the horizontal line right the angle of depression AD is the line of sight for the first ship so the angle of depression would be this which is given to be 30 degrees and the angle of uh, depression for the second ship will be this angle which will be 45 degrees as given in the question now see if this is 30 degrees this is parallel to this because this BD is also a horizontal line parallel to the ground or the sea so this will also be 30 degrees why because this angle and this angle will be alternate angles right? right this angle and this angle will be alternate angle again this is 45 degrees so this will also be 45 degrees again by the same logic here AC will be the transversal here AD was the transversal right this is 90 degrees because there's a vertical tower right and this is the horizontal thing the angle between the vertical and the horizontal lines would be 90 degrees so this is the basic figure now we have to find the distance between the ships which will be the distance cd the figure is clear now now let me show you the cleaner figure 
there it is okay so you have AB as the tower which is 75 meters high this is 90 degrees 45 degrees 30 degrees okay so basically angle of depression was so you should show the angle of depression first so this will be 30 degrees right and this angle would be 45 degrees so first show this and then you can mention it in one line that okay this angle will be 30 degrees because of uh, because angle ACB is equal to and this angle 30 degrees angle of depression because of uh, because they are alternate angles and this is parallel to this the similar reasoning would go for this angle and this angle right so you can write mention two lines about this now we need to calculate the distance CD CD again is not a part of a right angle triangle it's not a part of a right angle triangle right so what we do is we need to find CD with the help of other sides, other lengths, right? Just like I think we did in the previous question. So what we need to do is calculate BC because BC is a part of a right angle triangle ABC, which we can find using sine, cos, and tan, and then calculate BD and subtract BD from BC. So that is how we'll be able to get the value of CD, right? So that is what we are going to do first let's calculate let's calculate BD first so in triangle ABD right now BD with respect to this angle 45 degrees what is BD BD is the base and what is known as AB that's the perpendicular we are going to use AB right so what trigonometric ratio connects the perpendicular and base in a triangle it's tan so tan of 45 degrees equal to the perpendicular which is AB divided by BD right now one thing to note here is whenever you have 45 degrees and you are taking tan of that angle remember that that triangle that right angle triangle will be isosceles so the perpendicular will be equal to base so you don't have to waste time you know writing AB by BD and then uh, you know proving that they are equal you can directly go ahead with that I mean, mention it as equal because it's going to be a right angle isosceles triangle so okay let's do it here tan 45 is 1 AB is 75 meters and BD is what you want to calculate so BD take BD to the other side so BD will be equal to 75 meters fine now we need to find BC why see I'll just tell you we are aiming to calculate CD which is equal to BC minus BD so we have already calculated BD now we are going to find BC so BC is a part of triangle ABC so in triangle ABC again we are going to use tan 30 right because AB is the perpendicular BC is the base that we need to find so tan is the trigonometric ratio that relates the perpendicular and base even in that triangle so tan 30 degrees will be equal to AB by BC now tan 30 degrees is 1 by root 3 equal to AB is what 75 meters BC is what we need to find take BC to the other side root 3 to the other side BC will be equal to 75 root 3 meters right now we need to find CD so CD is equal to BC minus BD BC is what 75 root 3 BD is what 75 so these many meters take 75 common we'll have root 3 minus 1 meters what is root 3 75 1.732 minus 1 why I didn't leave it at this I mean some people might mark it correct but then I'm going further ahead with the decimal thing because 75 into root 3 minus 1 does not look good to me 
uh, had it been seven, just 75 root 3, I would have uh, left the answer as that. But since it's root 3 minus 1, even if it had been root 3 plus 1, I would have gone ahead and converted the answer into decimals. So 75, 1.732 minus 1 would be 0.732 meters. That will be equal to, I think, approximately 75 twos are 150, 15 here, 75 threes are 225 plus 15, 240. So again, 0. 24 carry over 75 sevens are 300 and 225, 525 plus 24 is 549. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 here. So basically 54.9 meters approximately. Fine. But this is our answer. So this is a question from your NCRT textbook. Understood. So let's move on to the next question quickly. Question 8. Okay, from the top of a hill, 200 root 3 meters high. Okay, so let's make the hill. Let's make the hill. Beautiful straight line. 200 root 3 meters. This is the hill. The angle of depression of a ship moving towards the hill is 30 degrees angle of depression. So let's say this is the sea level. The ship is somewhere here okay make the line of sight this is the line of sight okay the angle of depression is 30 degrees so that's the horizontal line this is the line of sight this is the horizontal line so this angle is 30 degrees okay let's say a b is the lighthouse the ship is at c now what will this angle be this will this angle will also be 30 degrees because this angle this angle and this angle are alternate angles because this line is parallel to this both are horizontal lines as before right now after two minutes its angle of depression becomes 60 degrees obviously the ship is moving towards the hill in this direction right so the angle of depression now becomes 60 degrees so let's say the ship has reached here after two minutes so join this again to the observer okay this is 90 now new angle of depression will be this because ad this will be the line of sight the new line of sight the horizontal line remains the same so this angle will be 60 degrees now when this angle is 60 degrees this angle will also be 60 degrees because again line of sight is the transversal this line is parallel to this line so this angle and this angle will be alternate angle so they'll be equal now we need to find the speed of the ship assuming it to be uniform what is the formula for speed do you remember from class 9th speed is distance divided by time now the time is given to be what two minutes in these two minutes what distance has the ship covered it is this distance cd so again we need to find the distance cd and then divide it by the time which is two minutes to get the speed the first step is calculating cd right so now let me show you the clearer figure okay right now <clears throat> we need to find cd right first right so first we'll find cd how will you find cd now cd again like in the previous two questions is not a part of a uh, right angle triangle so we are going to use right angle triangles to find the sides through which you know by subtraction or addition we can find the length cd so cd again uh, like in the previous question 
would be given by BC minus BD. So we'll first find BC, then find BD, and then we'll subtract them to get the value of CD. Then we'll divide it by time to get the speed. So BC is a part of right angle triangle ABC. So in triangle ABC, now BC is what we want to find. What is BC with respect to this angle 30 degrees is the base. And what we know is AB, which with respect to the 30 degrees angle is the perpendicular. So which trigonometric ratio are we going to use? We are going to use tan theta. So tan 30 degrees will be equal to perpendicular by base, right? Equal to this is 200 root 3 by BC. BC is what we want to find. What is tan 30 degrees? It's 1 by root 3. That will be equal to 200 root 3 by BC. Or just take BC to the other side, root 3 to the other side. BC will be equal to 200 root 3 into root 3 meters. Now root 3 into root 3 is 3 into 200. Okay, let me take a step further. Okay. So that will be 600 meters. Fine. Now we need to find BD. Right. Let's find BD. So BD is a part of triangle, right angle triangle ADB. Okay. So in triangle ADB, again we are going to use tan because BD is the base with respect to 60 degree that is given. BD is the base and AB is what we know. So we are going to use that. So AB is the perpendicular again. So again we are going to use tan 60 because we need the relation between perpendicular and the base. So tan 60 will be equal to AB by BD right or tan 60 is how much root 3 equal to AB is 200 root 3 by BD. Just cross multiply take BD to the other side goes in the numerator bring root 3 down here bd would be 200 root 3 by root 3 meters or bd is equal to 200 meters i'll draw a line here so that you know they are separate right so you got bd as 200 meters what do we need now cd so what is CD? Now C. CD will be equal to BC minus BD, which will be equal to BC is how much? 600 meters. BD is how much? 200 meters, right? Here we have the BC, here we have BD. So that will be equal to 400 meters. Now this is the distance. What is the time in which the ship has traveled? This distance is 2 minutes. You can obviously I mean, change the units and calculate. But I am going to keep uh, the unit of distance as meters and of time as minutes. So required speed will be what? Distance divided by time right then we distance is 400 meters time is 2 minutes so to one the to 200 so, so 200 meters per minute you might as well change the time to seconds and get the answer in meters per second there's nothing wrong in it so this is it for today's lecture in the next lecture we are going to discuss more questions if you like what you saw don't forget to hit the subscribe button this is abhishek chandra signing off take care